Greetings everyone and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread and Scripture Song broadcast for this 15th day of April. It is Monday and today's topic is titled Prayer Changes Things and this is part two of yesterday's message which was the prayer of faith and I thought that Brother McComas had done more of these uh, on prayer but I guess not. I was, must have been thinking of somebody else that was doing a, a series of um, messages on prayer. I think it was Brother Goodell or... Um, Brother Green, uh, one of those two. So, but anyway, uh, this will be the second part of this uh, message here. So, if you missed the first part, I encourage you to go back and watch that. Um, whoever you watch on Facebook or YouTube channel or whatever, um, uh, one of those two platforms. Um, so, check that out. And so, before we get started on the message, uh, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And he too can be your Lord and Savior day, and that's the most important thing you can ever do is trust Jesus and believe on him, and he will save your soul and give you eternal life. And you need to understand that you're dead in trespasses and sin, and that you can't save yourself, and nobody else can save you except for Jesus. No man can save you, Pope, priest, Mary, whoever it is you're looking to to um, be your mediator. It's Jesus Christ. He's the mediator between God and uh, men, the man Christ Jesus. So got to go straight to him and trust him and believe on him and and then after you get saved then he'll uh, guide you and direct you in all truth and help you live a christ-like life as you desire to do so so and to grow and we're always growing and if you uh, think that you don't need to grow anymore if you are saved well that's a dangerous spot to be in so you need to understand that we're always growing and learning and and trying to live as best we can in this body of flesh while we're saved and Realize that the soul is saved, but the body is not saved yet and won't be redeemed until we get to uh, be with Jesus up in heavenly places. So, um, got to know all that too. So, amen. All right. So, we're going to go ahead and get into the scripture song here in a few minutes. But I want to go over Isaiah 49 in its entirety so you can get an idea of what's going on in this chapter here. You need to understand that um, the... Old Testament is written to the Jews, but of course you can take and apply things in the Old Testament to your life in practical ways and spiritual ways, but we need to understand that not everything is written to us, but everything is written for us, so we need the Old Testament as much as the New Testament to understand things and to uh, have these examples, um, how not to live and uh, how to live and what not to do and what to do, so, okay. Now let's go ahead and go to chapter 49 and look at this chapter here. And let's see, chapter 49. And let's look here. How many verses are there? It's 26 verses. So we'll go ahead and read this in its entirety and then get into the scripture song. All right, so this is chapter 49 of Isaiah. And it says here in verse 1, Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people, from far. The Lord hath called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name, and he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword, in the shadow of his hand hath he hid me, and made me a polished sh uh, shaft, in his quiver hath he hid me, and said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Then I said, I have labored in vain, I have spent my strength for naught, and in vain, yet surely my judgment is with the Lord, and my work with my God. Verse 5, And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb, to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him, though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, and his Holy One, to him whom man despiseth, to him whom the nation abhorreth, to a servant of rulers, kings, shall see and arise, 
princes also shall worship because of the Lord that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose, choo, uh, shall choose thee. Thus saith the Lord, In the acceptable time have I heard uh, thee, and in the day of salvation have I helped thee, and I will preserve thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth, to cause to inherit or to inherit excuse me to inherit the desolate uh, heritages that thou mayest say to the prisoners go forth to them that are in darkness shew yourselves uh, that they shall feed in the ways and their pastures shall be in at all high places <clears throat> they shall not hunger nor thirst neither shall the heat nor sun smite them for he that hath mercy on them shall lead them even by the springs of water shall he guide them uh, guide them and i will make all my mountains away and my highways shall be exalted behold these shall come from far and lo these from the north and from the west and these from the land of sinem uh, sinem uh, yeah sinem um, then verse 13 says, Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains. For the Lord hath comforted his people, and will have mercy upon his afflicted. And that's the scripture song for today. And then verse 14 continues on. It says, But Zion said, The Lord hath forsaken me, and my Lord hath forgotten me. Can a woman forget her suckling, uh, su uh, sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Thy children shall make haste, thy destroyers, and uh, they that uh, made thee uh, waste shall go forth of thee. And uh, then the rest of the chapter uh, here will... Uh, stop there in ch uh, verse 17, and you can read the rest of the chapter on your own time. Um, verse 18 starts a new paragraph and new sentence, so we'll stop there and just give you an idea of what's being spoken of there, so you know uh, that. And now let's go ahead and get into the scripture song here and sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. Okay, so here we go. Isaiah 49, 13. <coughs> Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, Man. and break forth into singing, O mountains. For the Lord hath comforted his people, and will have mercy upon his afflicted. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth. And break forth into singing, O mountains. For the Lord hath comforted his people. For the Lord hath comforted his people. And will have mercy upon his afflicted. Will have mercy upon his afflicted. O heavens, and be joyful, O earth. And break forth into singing, O mountains. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth. And break forth into singing, O mountains. For the Lord hath comforted his people. For the Lord hath comforted his people. And will have mercy upon his afflicted. And will have mercy upon his afflicted. Sing, sing, sing. That's right. Praise the Lord. That. And we'll put that back yesterday's, and we'll do those again towards the end of the broadcast. Now let's go ahead and get into today's topic titled, Prayer Changes Things. And like I said a little bit ago, that this would be part two uh, of yesterday's message, which was titled, The Prayer of Faith. And Brother Ken McComas is the author here. And we have Romans 10.1 is the passage. And it says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved, Romans 10, 1. So this uh, particular chapter is uh, speaking to Israel, and um, so I think it was chapter 9, 10, 11 are um, directed to Israel um, in general, And but of course we can 
taken. Like I said uh, before, I apply these things in practical ways and stuff. So, <clears throat> amen. And all right, so uh, Ken McComas, he's the author again for today. And he's from Ritman, Ohio. So let me read you what he wrote here. He says, a captain out on the Atlantic received a message in the late evening that a great storm was brewing behind him. A little while later, another came informing him of another great storm forming ahead. Oh boy, that's not good. So he had a storm behind him and a storm ahead of him. Uh, the passengers were all ordered to their quarters as an old uh, saint of God came to the captain and said, Would you allow me to pray with you that God would deliver us from the storm? The captain, an unbeliever, said, Go ahead. I don't have anything to lose. Go ahead and pray. The old man did pray. That night the captain said the stars at midnight came out on a dress parade. I never saw a clear sky prevail uh, through the night. The storm behind never caught up, and one in, and the one in front never crossed their path. Prayer changes things. I wonder if that was um, was that? What am I thinking of? Um, was it George Mueller? Uh, maybe it was him that uh, uh, was the one that uh, I know. There's one about him uh, praying to the captain, and the captain didn't believe him, and then the sky. Or, no, I'm thinking of, yeah, he prayed and it was fog or something. And he prayed and then the fog disappeared and it was a clear, clear uh, passage the rest of the way. And then the captain, I think, became a believer. And so I have to look that up and make sure that was the right person I'm thinking of. All right, I'm not sure. If, I think this might have been somebody else, though, but it sounds similar to that story. Um, so praise the Lord. All right, so prayer changes things. Praise God. And continuing on, it says, James said, The prayer of faith shall save the sick, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. James 5.15 uh, There is one prayer every Christian has had to pray somewhere along the road of life. The prayer of faith to receive Christ into their hearts. <laughs> and don't like to use that word because, uh, you know, people like to say... Uh, you need to have Jesus come into your heart. Well, that's not uh, Jesus doesn't want to come into your heart. He wants you to give up your dirty heart and come to him. And, uh, of course, he'll clean it up for you and all that. But uh, when you use uh, words like that, uh, we should say that we should receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And then, of course, he does come and live inside you and he um, cleanses your soul and um, washes away all your sin and all that. So, um, amen. Praise the Lord. But uh, I understand what he's trying to say here, <clears throat> that uh, we need to be careful when we um, say certain things and say them certain ways, like say, yeah, you need to have Jesus come into your heart. Well, Jesus doesn't want to come into your dirty heart. He wants you to um, confess your sins and believe on him, and he'll wash away all your sin and give you eternal life and all that, and then and then show you how to live a Christ-like life after you're saved. But um, so, and all that. Okay, so continuing on, it says, Paul said uh, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved, Romans 10, 9. Salvation is uh, a conditional matter. It's up to the individual to accept or reject, or um, receive or reject. So, um, um, what did Brother James say? He said that, um, you might uh, um, accept Jesus, but will Jesus accept you? And uh, so you need to, again, repent and turn from your wicked ways and trust Jesus your Savior. Receive him, and um, you either receive Jesus or you reject him. So um, this is the word I'd rather use than this word here. Okay, so and I guess uh, in a way it is a conditional matter, um, but uh, um, I don't know about... Uh, using it like that either so because salvation is eternal and once you trust jesus as your savior you are saved forever and ever and you can't lose it so but of course it's up to you if you want to be saved or not if you're going to receive jesus as your savior you're going to reject him so okay continuing on christ must be received 
and uh, appropriated personally. So I changed that again because uh, um, I wouldn't use that word accepted because uh, accepted isn't really a good word because again, you can accept Christ because when you use that word, it's like, okay, well, I accepted him. Well, there, maybe I didn't want to accept him, but I accept him. But what if he doesn't accept me? <laughs> so got to be careful when we use certain words. So I would say more is um, Christ must be received and uh, appropriated personally. Um, so if you understand what I'm saying there, it says, have you, again, he's using the word accepted uh, Christ Jesus unconditionally. Um, but I would say, have you received Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior? So it's either you receive him, once you call upon him, then that means you have received him and he comes and lives inside of you. So praise the Lord. All right. So good message there. Uh, minus the wording he uses uh, here. But uh, hope you understand that better. By you got to receive Jesus and trust him as your Savior and he will save your soul. And then keep on receiving him and trusting him after you get saved. That he will help you through your everyday life. So, praise God. Alright, so that's the end of that message there. And, and prayer does change things. So, let's keep praying without ceasing. And now let's go ahead and get into the Daily Strength Volume 2 book. As we are starting in this week on edification. And we started yesterday with the... Um, the introductory stuff from yesterday, and today is day 72, Monday, titled, What is Edification? And we have 2 Corinthians 13.10 is the passage, and I encourage you to read all of 2 Corinthians chapter 13 to get uh, the rest of the uh, verses there, before and after. So it says here, Therefore, I write these things being absent. So this is Paul speaking. Lest being present, I should use sharpness, according to the power which the Lord hath given me to edification and not to destruction, is what Paul says here, because believers at Corinth were living carnal lives and doing all sorts of um, sinful things even after they were saved, and Paul had to keep coming back and telling them um, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that they needed to straighten up their lives after they were saved and do right and live right and all that, so... Okay, so that's the um, passage there. And now introductory thoughts. It says, The Bible's built-in dictionary defines edification by con contrasting it with destruction. Destruction gives the sense of tearing down something. Uh, therefore, it uh, makes sense that edification refers to the opposite of tearing down. Consider a related word. An edifice is a building. That this further confirms that edification means to build up something. Yeah, amen. As saints of God, we should be building ourselves and others on our most holy faith. Jude, verse 20. In fact, everything we do should be judged by whether or not it works to build up or to strengthen us or other believers. Christians should focus on conscious. Uh, building others in the faith, right? So it's not about you anymore. It's about others and building others up in the faith. And uh, consistently edifying others takes uh, thorough uh, planning. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, thorough planning and uh, direction. Whereas destructive behavior frequently takes place haphazardly. Hmm. So we can learn from that to build up and not to tear down. Okay, so good introductory thoughts there. And now for devotional thoughts for children. And of course we can apply this to both children and adults in many ways. So it says, um, here, did you ever work hard at building a tower with blocks only to have someone walk by and knock it down? <laughs> right, yeah. How did you feel? This example demonstrates how much easier it is to destroy than it is to build. Yeah. So let's be careful of that. Our words function the same way. Satan finds pleasure from those who use their words to hurt and tear down others. So let's be careful with our words, not to hurt uh, one another and tear down one another, but to lift each other up and help each other and encourage each other with encouraging words and uplifting words. So, all right. And that was uh, 
that now for everyone it says do you build up other believers or tear them down are they spiritually stronger for knowing you uh, what are some things that you could do to edify others today yeah good question so let's do that um uh, build up other believers and um, help them be uh, spiritually stronger by knowing you or i and then um, learning uh, what we can do um, to edify others uh, today and then continuing on it says what or why is it important that we edify other believers in what ways could this uh, please the lord how can it be displeasing to the lord if we destroy others hmm because we're not supposed to hurt another believer because they're uh they're the lords and they belong to the lord and so we need to understand that also now for prayer thoughts it says ask the lord to show you the importance of edifying others and then the second prayer thought is ask the lord to give you a desire to edify those around you and then the hymn for today is titled blessed be the tie that binds so that would be the second hymn and Praise the Lord, I was able to find uh, instrumentals for both of these hymns. Of course, I knew I'd find one for this one. And they're both in the book. So let's go ahead and get into the uh, hymn book here. And let's learn to edify one another and lift each other up and encourage each other to keep on going and not to tear one another down and all that and say hateful, meanful words and be careful with our words. So, all right. So now let's go ahead and do this uh, hymn singing today. And this first one is, um, uh, is um, Tis the Blessed Hour of Prayer. And this is another one of these, the Prayer of the Saint Hymns, a spiritual song. And this is hymn 712 in the book, written by Fanny J. Crosby, 1820 to 1915 is when she lived. And then William H. Doane, D-O-A-N-E, not sure if the E is silent or not. Uh, 1832 to 1915 no story for this one so let's go ahead and press play and try to sing along i'm not too familiar with this one so let's see <clears throat> stanzas so. <clears throat> like I said I'm not too familiar with this one <laughs> give it a try one more time and if I can't do it then I'll let you listen to it and then we'll I'll read to the stanzas Blessed hour of 
prayer was a balm for the weary. Oh, how sweet to be there! It's the blessed hour of prayer when the Savior draws near with a tender compassion. His children to hear when he tells us we may cast at his feet every gift. What a bomb for the care, what a bomb for the weary. Oh, how sweet to be there! Blessed hour of prayer, blessed hour of prayer. What a balm for the weary, oh how sweet to be there. Is the blessed hour of prayer, when the tempted and tried, To the Savior who loves them, their sorrow confide. With the sympathizing heart, he removes every care. What a balm for the weary. Oh, how sweet to be there. Blessed hour of prayer. Blessed hour of prayer. What a balm for the weary. Oh, how sweet to be there. At the blessed hour of prayer, trusting Him we believe that the blessing we're needing we'll surely receive. In the fullness of this trust, we shall lose every care. What a balm for the weary. How sweet to be there. Blessed hour of prayer, blessed hour of prayer. What a balm for the weary. Oh, how sweet to be there. Amen. All right, well, did it. A little challenging there, but... Um, Got through that, and maybe we'll try that again another time. Okay, so that was the hymn, uh, "Tis the Blessed Hour of Prayer." And now let me give you the references here, and then we'll move on to the second hymn. So stanza one, we have Psalm ten seventeen, and then Psalm thirty one verse two. Stanza two is First John five fourteen and First Peter five seven. Stanza three is Hebrews four fifteen and Hebrews four sixteen. And then stanza four is First Timothy two eight and John sixteen twenty four, and then one reference for the refrain, and that's Psalm one thirty three verse one. So that's the end of the first uh, one here. And we're gonna go ahead here a little bit, and we'll be singing this song here in a couple weeks, I'm sure again. But uh, we're gonna do it here today. Blessed be the tie that binds. So let's look up this one. And let's see here. Okay. Do that. All right. Look this up really quick. Blessed be the five that binds. No, all right, so let's look this one up. <clears throat> all right, let's see if I uh, want to see something really quick. Let's see if this particular person has this one as one of their hymns. If not, we'll do it different. All right, let's do this. <clears throat> Actually, no, we don't see. Alright, let's see here. No, we don't do that one. 
I'm going to do one that's lengthy because this one's got to six stanzas here, but I'm not sure if all six stanzas will be on the instrumental or not. But uh... All right, well, I can't find that one, so we'll go back to this other one at the top here. I was going to do the one that uh, Brother, Brother Dougie Jones did, um, but uh, his is not... Uh... So, let's see... All right, I guess we'll do this one right here. All right, so blessed be the tie that binds is the hymn. And there's six stanzas here on this one, but I'm sure the instrumental doesn't have all six stanzas here, so I might have to um, start it over again or if I can't get the tune. So, all right, so this is uh, one of these, the Unity of the Saint hymns. And this is a spiritual song, and this is hymn 758 in the book, Blessed Be or Blessed Be the Tie That Binds, written by John Fawcett, who lived from 1740 to 1817, and then Hans uh, G. Uh, N Nageli, that's N-A-G-E-L-I, Nageli, uh, 1773 to 1836, and then arranged by Lowell Mason, 1792 to 1872. And there is a story with this one, so let's go ahead and press play here. And stances wasn't um wasn't in the the instrumental there so all right so six stances that we sang there and now the uh, story behind the hymn says in 1772 while tending a small baptist flock in 
uh, Wayne, Waynesgate, Pastor uh, Fawcett accepted a call to a larger church in London, deciding to go. He preached his farewell sermon with wagons loaded. The weeping saints gathered and pleaded for him to stay. His wife remarked, Oh, John, John, I cannot bear this, neither can I, and we will not go, exclaimed the good pastor, unloaded the unload the wagons and put everything as it was before the congregation uh, hailed with joy his decision uh, these lines were later written in commemoration hmm. so that's the story there and now the references here so we have stanza one is first john 1 3 and romans 15 5 through 7 stanza two is hebrews 4 16 and philippians 2 1 through 5 Stanza 3 is Galatians 6, 1-2, and Romans 12, 15. Stanza 4 is Acts 20, verse 38, and Colossians 2, 5. Stanza 5 is 1 John 3, 1-3, and Titus 2, 11-14. And then stanza 6 is Re uh, Revelation 21, 4, and 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. So that's the end of the hymns for today. And now let me put this to yes tomorrow's. Him and put that aside for right now and grab the scripture song book and do the scripture songs one more time and then we'll wrap it up for today. So, yesterday was the uh, 14th. So, let's press play and sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty one more time. James 1 12. Blessed, Blessed is the, is the man, man that endureth temptation, temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which, which the Lord hath promised. To them that love him. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation for when he is tried he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him praise God now today is one more time. Isaiah 49, 13. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains. For the Lord hath comforted his people, Praise and God. will have mercy upon his afflicted. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains. Sing, O heaven, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains. For the Lord hath comforted his people. For the Lord hath comforted his people. And will have mercy upon his afflicted. And will have mercy upon his afflicted. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth. And break forth into singing, O mountains. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth. And break forth into singing, O mountains. For the Lord hath comforted his people. For the Lord hath comforted his people. And will have mercy upon his afflicted. And will have mercy upon his afflicted. Sing, sing, sing. All right. Amen. So that is it for today's broadcast, but before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song, and then the topics for the Baptist Bread and Daily Strength, the devotional books, and then the hymns for tomorrow. So tomorrow will be the 16th, and 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5 are the passages for the scripture song, and it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, 
and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And so that's the scripture song, and we'll go over the uh, verses before and after, so you get the context of um, all that in Second Corinthians chapter 10. So, all right, and then the Baptist bread uh, topic for tomorrow is titled, The Case for the Bible, and this is Psalm 12, uh, 6a and 7a are the passages, and tomorrow's author is Brother Tim Green from Revival on Our Times, Day Heights, Ohio. So this will be topic from him, the case for the Bible. And then the daily strength topic as we are continuing on this week on edification. And tomorrow is Day 73, Tuesday. And it's titled, Not Everything Edifies. And that's the truth, not everything edifies. And we have 1 Corinthians 10.23 for the passage. And then the hymn for tomorrow from the book is titled Above the Treasures of This World. So that will be tomorrow's hymn in the book. And then the first hymn tomorrow. I'm not too familiar with that one. I don't think this one's a familiar one either. Uh, this one's uh, titled Ye Morning, Ye Afflict Afflicted Saints. And um, this is another one of these, the Prayer of the Saint Hymns, a spiritual song. Hymn 713 in the book. Uh, written by Samuel uh, Medley and Lowell Mason. And there is a story for this one here. And so hopefully we can find the instrumental for both of these hymns. And this is the cover of the book. This is the blue cover, the one I've been using lately. There's also a brown uh, tannish cover there. And then also a lighter grayish, bluish color uh, to these hymn, uh, hymnals, uh, whichever one you like, or you also get the leather-bound edition. So that's that uh, hymn book there. And then the Daily Strength Volume 2 book. There's four volumes to this series of books, and all these books can be found at MelodyPublications.com is the website there to order those books and other materials that they might have on there. I'm not sure what they have on there. Um, uh, right now I know there's a couple CDs they have. And then some other stuff like keychains and stuff like that. So you can check that, that out on that website. So that's that. And then the um, Scripture Song book and CD should be available to order online at www.dailyscripturesongs.com where you can contact Brother Dean and ask him how to get the CDs and the book here. And um, that's Brother Dean and Sister Patty Runyon, missionaries to Port Kaituma, Guyana. But they are here in the States right now and... Um, waiting for some transplant that he's got uh, to get. So and so pray for them and pray for that mission field and the work going on over there as it continues on with brothers and sisters in Christ taking over the work there. Um, so uh, keep that in your prayer and all that. So that's how you get that. And then the Baptist Bread uh, book here. This is the cover from last month and this month. So if you order now, you'll get the one from May and June. And uh, at the end of the month, I'll show you the cover to that. And it's got a waterfall on it, so um, we'll get into that at the end of the month there. Um, so that's that, and baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org is um, the um, websites there. And uh, to order uh, the ba Baptist Bread book and then other books that are available on the second website there. I think I gave you the right address for the second one. Um, double check here, yeah. So timgreenministries.org. This is the second website there. And then, of course, the Bible, the King James Bible, the Word of God. This is the first book we shall always be getting into and reading it and studying it and showing thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, and then going to the Lord in prayer and seeking his face and trusting him and having a good, solid relationship with the Lord and all that. So that's the Bible there. And then the other broadcast I do is the um, reading of Brother James's book on Genesis, part of the Christ Honoring Commentary series, and his books can be uh, found at the church website at www.jameswnox.org, or you can go straight to the church uh, store part of the website, which is store.jameswnox.org, and look up all his books there. That is still in print at the present time, and then the YouTube channel that the church has is uh, James Knox Sermons YouTube channel. And check out that. Uh, the messages yesterday were really good. Um, convicting, but good um, for the part of the pastoral epistle uh, lessons there that he's been going through. So check those sermons out. And uh, 
And then, um, so that's that. And then the podcast I do, where I've been reading uh, the book on Eric Liddell, part of the Christian Heroes Then and Now series by YWAM Publishing uh, Company, and written by Janet and Jeff Binge. And you can listen to that uh, book being read to you on my podcast, which is God's Messenger Lighthouse Podcast on Spotify or iHeartRadio. So check that out if you like to hear uh, Christian books being read to you. And, uh, of course, you can order your own copy of these books also, which I encourage you to do. So you have a copy of your own. And uh, so praise the Lord for these different heroes of the faith, past and present. And uh, so, all right, well, that'll be about it for today. So thanks for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you until next time. Oh, and also um, uh, pray for the UCF ministry today. Uh, we do that uh, twice a month on the first Monday and then the middle last Monday of the month. So pray for that ministry um, that we can... Um, get out there and get the gospel out to these students that um, are taught that they can't know anything for sure. And, of course, they can know something for sure, that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior, and he wants to save their souls. So pray for that ministry, and uh, praise the Lord. All right, well, see you all, Lord willing, next time. Bye-bye for now.